How's it going, good friends? Brian from Apex Detail. The voice is healing, it's coming back strong, so let's get a video started. Speaking of the voice, I had a fantastic weekend at the Chicago Auto Show in the Turtle Wax booth, and I met a ton of you guys. A blast, an absolute blast, the highlight of the weekend. Um, you guys are friendly, cordial, eager to learn, easy to talk to. Um, and that kind of inspired me for this video here. But besides those that I met, um, that I've known from the channel, I've met a lot more. And the popular question was, what kind of polisher can I go out and purchase, team it up with a pad, team that up with uh, a polish, and turn the paint around on my own car? I have some swirling, some imperfections, light, uh, a little bit of oxidation, a little bit of dullness. So this video today will show you how to get that done. I'm going to make this as easy for you as I can. I have a couple panels. I have three to be more specific. One panel with hard clear, one panel with moderate or medium um, hardness of clear coat, and one with soft clear. And I'm going to bring in that panel one at a time and show you what polisher you could team up with what pad and what polish to turn it around and I'll show you how to do it. So let's get this started. The very first panel, we're going to bring in a dark blue color. It has hard clear coat. And as you can see, using the shop light, it's, it's stressed. It's troubled clear coat, has scratches, marring, it's dull. So let's team it up with something you can easily find at an advanced auto parts store. This is the Griot's Garage G6. I don't know if I can get this to focus or not, but this polisher here is an entry-level polisher, only an 8mm throw. Won't get you into trouble. About 149 bucks, and you could pick it up. Team that up with this Eurofiber pad here. This is a 50% cutting, 50% polish fiber pad. Team that up with 3D1 here. You've seen all of these uh, in dedicated videos or showcases and you can refer back to them if you want to see them individually but let's put them together as a team and since i have uh, a piece of masking tape right down the middle of that troubled area let me correct this and show you how to do it and show you the results from this team on hard clear coat all right, what I'm going to show you right now is how I prime the pad. One of two ways that I prime it, working some of the product into the fibers, just rubbing it in. Or here's the Chemical Guys pad conditioner. Two quick sprays or mist it onto the pad, rub that in, and then you can add your product two, three, four piece sized drops to the pad, depending on how large of an area you're going to work. Again, personally, it's just uh, my preference. I do not like to apply a dry pad to the surface. So what we're doing here is just dabbing out the product and we want to spread it out on low, the first lowest speed setting. Spreading out the abrasives on the, the area you're working on ensures a nice even cut across the panel. And now we can crank it up a bit. My favorite sweet spot on most polishers between the third and fourth speed setting. That normally is a sweet spot for the, the least amount of vibration for the polisher. The most energy you can get to the pad without raising or spiking temperatures too high on the panel. We talked about temperatures a lot on the channel. You don't want temperatures spiking in the area you're working on higher than 20 degrees of what the ambient temperature is for the rest of the panel. It's just too much stress for the clear coat. So we're moving back and forth. You want to keep the polisher moving. As I mentioned talking to some of you in person, you don't want to ho hover over one area too long with the polisher. That'll get you into trouble, either burning through the paint or spiking temperatures. You can see my left hand just guiding the polisher. Not a ton of pressure, just a little bit of pressure through my thumb. And we're moving at one inch every second or two. That's called correction speed. Let's quickly talk about the Euro Fiber Pad we have attached to the polisher. 50% cut, 50% polish fibers. This pad usually works perfectly for clear coat that is in between medium and soft, all the way up to in between medium and hard. Real hard clear, real soft clear, the pad does not get along with so well. On softer clear, it can leave a little bit of hazing behind because the clear is just too soft you'll have to adjust using a different pad, and we'll talk about that later. On harder clear, sometimes your fiber pad just doesn't have enough oomph behind it to get some of the imperfections out. And you need a little bit more of an aggressive pad, microfiber, or wool. 
Yeah, so I bring you in close so we can remove the residue and I can show you the progress we made. We could talk about 3D1 real quick. And I have a designated showcase, which really goes into detail. You can revert back to that, but no fillers. It's just straight up correction and you team up the right pad with that on your clear, depending on what type of imperfection you want to remove. And it's a one polish system. And as I remove the masking tape, you can see the huge difference it made with the crisscross pattern. And that's equal to two passes. Yes, you guys can make this type of improvement on your car. Just following those instructions with that type of polisher, which was just an entry level polisher, that polish and that pad. Very good, away with that panel and in comes the panel with clear coat that has medium hardness or moderate hardness. It's right in the middle, again, stressed. So we're gonna pick up the Harbor Freight's Bauer Polisher. They have two. This one here is what I would recommend if you're just starting out. It has the 8mm throw compared to the 20mm throw uh, of the other larger unit. Now, you could use the Euro Fiber again, but I want to show you a different pad. This is from Buff and Shine. This is a, you know, this is a, a beefy polishing pad right in the middle. Perfect for this situation. And we'll team that up with Turtle Wax Hybrid Solutions, Ceramic, Polish, and Wax. This particular team is incredible for clear coat that has medium or moderate hardness. And then the next question I usually get is, how can I tell what the clear coat is on my car, hard, medium, or soft? The best way, if you're not sure, is to do a test spot. An inconspicuous area, up in the roof, down below on the lower rocker. And if you're using a correction fluid or a polish that is known to be not very aggressive, and you can look that up easily, just Google it. And if it corrects the imperfections you're going after real quick uh, without hardly any effort, more than likely that clear will be rather on the soft side. If the imperfections are hardly improved whatsoever with a pass or two, more than likely that clear is going to be stubborn and hard. It's almost useless to throw makes and models into categories these days because it's changing from year to year. Um, for the most part, there used to be a rule of thumb that GM uh, was hard, uh, stubborn, but that's not always the case. Now they have tinted clear that's softer. And just every year, the clear coat on GM is getting thinner and softer to begin with. It used to be that same category for Ford and Dodge. Um, some of the German cars used to be a split, some soft. Um, some hard and that's changing from year to the year uh, a lot of the Asian cars and Jaguar very soft that seems to be continuing in that trend uh, they're actually getting thinner and softer so again a test area is going to be the best way for you to find out Okay, this combination, let's start with the polisher. Uh, again, another eight millimeter throw entry level polisher. A, pretty much exactly like the first one, just uh, different internal components. The pad itself, this one is a foam pad. As we get to wipe off the residue and check our progression, I'll rip off the masking tape. Um, so that's a foam pad, it's perforated, so it has airflow keeping the surface cool. That's something important. And that's teamed up with the Hybrid Solutions Polish and Wax. That already has protection in it. So with this combination, you're doing multiple steps at one time. You're turning around from this to this, and you're also laying down protection of Carnuba polymers and SiO2. And this, again, you can do by yourself that easy. All right, let's move on away with that panel, bringing in the Subaru hood here. So this is soft, thin, clear coat. Again, troubled. So we're going to team this up with another entry-level polisher, and this polisher is from MacShine. You can find this on Amazon. Um, you can easily order and have it at your house within a day or two. Teaming this up, up with Max Shine, they make their own pads. And you can see the color scheme down here below the system, and that'll tell you what type of polisher to use. We're going to team that up with the correction cream of the LVR503. So another pad-dependent correction-only uh, polish, and we're going to use that on this softer clear coat. So let me put on the pad. We're going to prime it. We're going to get to work. Now, uh, a question I get asked, how much does a combo like this cost? Polisher, the pad, and the correction liquid itself, 
uh, an average maybe of 175 bucks. But if you compared this to taking it to a detailer, um, you know, some of my packages start at 500. Uh, so that's on the lowest end. You know, it's a huge comparison uh, doing it on your own. It's going to cost you a little bit of time, but the reward is the turnaround. Uh, I guarantee you're just you're going to be hooked on detailing uh, once you've corrected your car and, and make it look incredible. And also, you're going to save some money. I'm hoping this gives you the best view um, of what I'm doing and, and how to do it. Uh, just cleaning out your pads before you jump to the next panel, you know, at the very least. I like to do pad cleaning in between every pass, keeping the pads clean, keep them effective. I have my own customized uh, pad cleaning cabinet, but all you really need is a pad cleaner and a brush and then wipe it off with a microfiber, uh, you know, an old junky microfiber. Okay, let's remove the residue and you'll notice on every one of the areas where you worked on not perfect but in an absolute huge turnaround if you need to go over it and do one more pass go ahead i would normally stop right there you don't want to shave too much clear coat remember clear coat is only two mils thick and that's if the manufacturer was generous and that doesn't happen very often these days so if you Kind of take a look at how thick or thin the wrapper is on a pack of gum, the plastic sheathing on the outside. Clear coat's thinner than that. So that's what we're removing imperfections from. I don't want to scare you. I just want to sort of um, educate you on how thin that coating is. But you can absolutely make this type of turnaround with removing a small amount of clear. All right, guys. So I believe that's going to help get you started. If you have any questions whatsoever, once you purchase the right polisher, pad, and polish to go with the clear coat that's on your car and match it up with the imperfections that you want to remove, just ask down in the comment section. I'll get back to you, or you can um, also reach me through my email, and I'll try to remember to pin that down below in the comments section as well. This has been Brian from Apex Detail. Catch you in the next video.